roses blooming each June upon the lawns at Beverly Hall was served as emblematic of the wine of the soul, and for this service the rose bushes were planted several years ago. This is also from the book, folks. I wish that all the readers of this book might have been present at the preparation, at the building, and at the dedication of this ancient magic circle. Or I wish that I might be able to give a detailed description of these sublime ceremonies in this book. However, I cannot do this here, though I hope that in some future work I will be able to do so. Sufficient be it to say that when the stone made out of cement by one of the brothers was nearly finished, the dedication took place, and the emblems placed in the stone itself before it was completed were the American Beauty Rose in full bloom. This, as a representation or symbol of the soul that has reached full illumination. The Mystic Ring. This was a solid gold ring belonging to one of the members present, upon which had been engraved the cross and the pentagram. All members of the Magi will know what this symbol stands for. The ring itself, as is known to the Magi, is a protecting agent against all evil or malignant influences when worn during any ceremonial or developing work. And the true magic mirror. This is an emblem of the soul, which when fully developed will act as a mirror to the universe, wherein may be wisdom and truth. Lastly, a complete copy of the private textbook entitled, quote, Ritualistic Occultism, unquote, which contains the ceremonies as made use of by the Magi. And four of these ceremonials were made use of by four of the Magi in the dedication of the magic circle. When all of this had taken place, the stone was completed, and then later in the day the characters were engraved upon the stone by the brother who had completed the stone. Of the midnight feast to the gods, and of the morning services which took place in the grove, it is not lawful for me to speak at this time. But it is my sincere prayer that all who are enrolled in the sacred schools may someday be present with us and witness these sublime ceremonies, especially as they are conferred in the spring of the year. In the spring of the year. Arrangements were made by the delegates present through voluntary contributions to either buy another large grove, or if that is found impracticable, to build a much larger hall in the Grove of Osiris so that advanced ceremonies may be held the coming spring at the 69th Convocation of the Rose Cross Order. Now I'm going to reveal something to you that I have never told you before on this program. I've been working up to it, and now is the time to tell you before I read from the next section of this book. For then you will understand what has been happening in the last 50 years and what is happening now. It was Harry Truman, a 33rd degree Freemason, who signed the United Nations Treaty, who pushed through and signed the United Nations Participation Act. It was also Harry Truman, a 33rd degree Freemason, operating in concert with Wild Bill Donovan, the head of the OSS, a member of the Sovereign and Military Order of the Knights of Malta and of the Order of the Knights Templar, who created the National Security Act, pushed it through Congress. Harry Truman signed it. It created the umbrella of national security, a curtain of secrecy, it created the Central Intelligence Agency, and behind this curtain of secrecy, the secret societies have been working to destroy the sovereignty of all nations and bring about a one-world totalitarian socialist government. And folks, all of the bugaboo enemies that you've been afraid of all your life were never enemies at all. For these were deceptions, manipulations. The only enemy, folks, that the people of the world have ever had is right here. Right here in this country, down at the corner in your town, in the temple that has no windows. And now, reading again from the book, the report from the 68th Convocation of the Order of the Rose Cross. 
introduction to the great seal. It is rather a strange and an unknown thing for one to write an introduction to a single chapter appearing in a book, but the conditions are so unusual as to warrant it. More than a year ago, Grace K. Morey, the author of the article, The Great Seal of the United States and Its Mystic Significance, prepared a sketch for a short primer of the Illuminati teachings. And in this sketch, as will be shown by the drawings, it was brought out that man is not only a threefold being, but that he is actually a fourfold being as well. In short, that when he has succeeded in reaching soul illumination, he is the completed pyramid or true triangle. If the student will give serious study to the article on the seal of the United States, he will find that on the reverse side of the seal, which is as yet uncut, there is to be found the pyramid, but with the capstone as yet not placed, and thus he will see that the philosophy of the Illuminati is the absolute and undeniable philosophy upon which these United States are founded, as is clearly indicated by our fourfold philosophy, by the drawings representing our philosophy, and by the drawings of the reverse side of the United States seal. And thus it would appear that the unseen hierarchies which shaped the foundation of the great republic which must some day rule the world are the same hierarchies which gave us the soul science philosophy as taught by the Illuminati. And now you know why what has happened in this country has happened and you now know why what is happening today is happening and you now know why on the reverse of the great seal of the United States are the words Novus Ordo Cyclorum, which literally translated means the new order of the ages, also known, ladies and gentlemen, as the new world order. But I won't let you rest with that shock. Listen to this, dear listeners. Hold on to your chairs, because the incredible admission that is coming to you right out of the pages of this book is going to knock you flat. Reading again from the book. And thus, it would appear that the unseen hierarchies which shaped the foundation of the great republic which must someday rule the world are the same hierarchies which gave us the soul science philosophy as taught by the Illuminati. And now let us look into the future, not far, but just beyond the line. We find that scholars condemn the design of the reverse side of the United States seal, that it has never been cut but has remained hidden as though it were something to be ashamed of. However, though this appears the truth, it is not the truth. The reason why it has never been cut is because the time is not yet, as the capstone has not yet been set. And what is this capstone? My reader, prepare for a shock. When Atlantis ruled the word, that which is now America was connected with Egypt by what is now Mexico, and in Mexico, in the territory of Yucatan, there is a pyramid in which the fire philosophers worshipped God as divine fire and life in like manner as did the initiates of Egypt, for the two were then one. America is not complete and will not be complete, cannot be complete until Mexico is again part of America as she was in the long ago. And when Mexico is once again a part of the United States, then will the capstone have been set on the pyramid and the reverse side of the United States seal will be cut. Thus you will see that the soul science primer with its drawings is but the beginning of the article concerning the seal of the United States, while the article on body, mind, spirit, and soul is the final thereof. May it not be long until the Holy Pyramid shall be completed, and may it be completed without the shedding of blood. Lovingly given, R. Swineberg Clymer, Beverly Hall, Quakertown, Pennsylvania, July 6th, 1916. And now you know the final truth, ladies and gentlemen. Now you know the purpose of the